negotiation uh, in the formation of the government or coalition. But what is it, maybe let me ask it this way, what is it that you are willing to somehow compromise given that uh, in a negotiation of this nature is a give and take? Um, out of that principles which you have laid out quite clearly, but I mean you are aware that uh, South Africans have given you half half in terms of mandate. So what is it that you as EFF are willing to somehow compromise? Thanks. Number two. Number three, everyone who's taking a question, please quietly move to a uh, mic near you. On the tables, there are mics that are working. Yeah, just, just uh, use the mic because you don't have a shop steward voice, you guys. So use the mic here. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Tidi Madia from Eyewitness News. Just a couple of questions from yeah. me. Yeah, um, can you tell us this was a question? But I'm on the mic. Thank you, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, Tidi Madia from Eyewitness News. Um, uh, I'm looking at the EFF's performance here in your election and election. We've watched the EFF grow. We're not necessarily watching that case now. I know people are making a case around the MK party. But as the EFF, and I know it might be too soon, reflected on the role it's played in its current position. And I mentioned that, Julius, because over the years there's been the KZN buses issue, about KZN councillors or the buses issue. There have been issues about seeing people who've been rejected supposedly by the ANC being given posts in Parliament. I've had EFF members saying, but we're working to reward these people. So has the EFF also reflected on whether or not you've also played a part in what's happened on that leaderboard behind us? Um, an issue of coalitions. Um, you worked with... The leadership did not hear the question. Make the question, the question, Tidi. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we'll understand. Take two. <laughs> when the EFF looks at its current performance, have you played a part as the EFF in where you've come out in those numbers there? In the past, every other election we've seen you grow. That's not the case in 2024. It's not just, for me, it's not just an MK question. Does the EFF look at itself and say, maybe we also need to reflect on what we should have done better? Right? That's the first question. Secondly, on the issue of coalitions, in 2016, you were in a working relationship with the DA. You're currently in one with the ANC, Nekuruleni. Part of what the ANC keeps saying is that it wasn't a working relationship. As they look at coalitions now, they say EFF is not desirable because it's difficult to manage the EFF. Is that a fair, an unfair assessment from where you stand as you go to the table? And just very quickly, uh, Vianya, last one. Uh, um, my last one, I swear. You have a list of your cardinal pillars that are part of what you're going to negotiations with. Some are saying, based on your current performance, you're not going there to the table with the upper hand, that you have no right to dictate the terms. You need to be more amenable to what is possible. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Comrades, let's uh, keep our questions pointed and uh, precise. Uh, number four. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Bilekele. I'm with Bloomberg News. Uh, the first question, just uh, around the configurations that you're thinking of in terms of coalitions, I wonder if you would consider a government of national unity in which all parties that have reached an agreed-upon threshold would automatically participate. Would you be in favor of that? That's the one configuration. The second one would be whether or not the agreement that you would be in favor of would affect just the national picture or if there's scope for it to be a wholesale agreement which would then consider where you participate in local municipalities and at a provincial level as well. And then please, the last one, Vianney, if possible, uh, will you wait for parties to come to you for these coalition talks, or are there parties that you've identified that you would like to make the approach to first? Uh, and which are those parties, if that is the case? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, number five. Thank you very much. My name is Lunga. I'm from the Mail and Guardian. Look, um, I just wanted to ask CIC, uh, during the media briefing, I think it was just before the elections, you said 
that your position would be in jeopardy if you if if you didn't do well in this in this uh, elections do you feel that that might be, there might be some issues where the EFF might want to change uh, you from the leadership and secondly do you think the emergency of uh, MK was the reason that uh, the EFF didn't do so well in this uh, election? And what do you think of, of, of how they did? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Number six. Let's move swiftly. Number six. Okay, we're skipping number seven. Hello, I'm Alexis Akwajir. I'm, I'm the managing editor of Semaphore Africa. Um, my question is, are there any preconditions with which you would deal with the ANC? And specifically, would you be prepared to work with the ANC only if um, Ramaphosa stepped down? I ask this because MK said they would not work with the ANC with Ramaphosa in place. Thank you. Number seven. Questions have been asked. Number eight, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Mawande. I work for the Sunday World. Mr. Malima, you, you start off by saying you accept the results. What has changed? Because we saw a lot of complaints, especially from EFF quarters in the Western Cape about the results. And just generally, uh, EFF members have been among those uh, claiming vote rigging, uh, vote manipulation, and all sorts of fraudulent uh, behavior that they allege against uh, the IEC. Uh, was the leadership, uh, does the leadership feel differently or did something change between the heightened complaining and now? And then maybe secondly, is the EFF among potential uh, uh, partners willing to work with the DA which declared the EFF coming into these elections as enemy number one? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think uh, the first round is done. We'll give it to the uh, leadership, Commander-in-Chief. Uh, thank you very much. We have just uh, outlined our cardinal pillars and issues that we'll be demanding to the ANC. And um, uh, um, we can't say now that this were prepared to let go or not. Because, like you said, um, negotiations of this nature need you to be ready to compromise on certain things. But there are certain fundamental things that you, you know that these are deal breakers. For instance, the issue of land. Um, it's not something that you can compromise on. Um, yeah, but we'll go and engage, open-minded kind of an engagement, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, uh, we want to work with the ANC. If there's any party that we can work with and work properly, is the ANC because ANC, when compromised, is not arrogant. And ANC, when it doesn't have absolute majority, and it happens that you share power with them, they never recover from losing power. So if we're to go to election again in the next two years, the ANC is sitting at 40% now. For sure, they're going to come back with 15%. Because they, after losing elections, they don't do any, any effort, nothing, to change some attitude. So once they say the ANC has lost what, what, you must know they are going to lose forever. So don't worry. That's why we prefer them, because they will never grow. Um, we, we, we did a self-reflection, and um, we did very well uh, as the EFF. Uh, we did what a well-established political party does, and um, including those buses, the, those people that were expelled for not bringing buses, we have no regret at all. Uh, they were, did not impact us anyway. Um, we, I just said in the statement now, 
when we're running elections, you'll find that there are people who are not playing a role in the elections, but they are, they are on, on the list. So uh, there is a, a principle a guideline that was issued during elections when we're constituting election teams and converting our structures into election teams that everybody must go perform where they are assigned. And then some decided not to do their work. And because they were disturbing the work of the elections, we said, just go home, uh, we'll see you after this uh, elections. So we're going to see them to tell them to decline the, their seat in parliament. Because you can't sit at home and then go and dance at the rents in Cape Town rents when people are fighting to put up a, a rally and all of that. You have no role to play. You sit at home straight from rents. You go to parliament. It will never happen that one. Never. It's not going to happen. Um, look, we, we, we are going to negotiate with the ANC the same way we did in 2016. Uh, we, were much, we, we, were, we were stronger um, uh, uh, in 2016. I mean, we were, we were, in 2016, we were almost the same numbers, I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Those numbers changed in 2019. Um, to, to be what they were, um, um, uh, 1.888 something. So that was not the number that we went with to the negotiations with the ANC with. We went to the ANC with the number that we have now, the same number we have now. That's the number we took when we went to have the elections with the ANC. So this is what happened. Uh, so... We were doing very well uh, after 2019. We did well in 2019, and we did well in 2021. And then we, we had a slight decline now. Why? The people who were supporting President Zuma after 2019, I mean, when President Zuma was removed, they had no any other home because they didn't want Cyril. So they ended up coming to us and uh, not coming in a form of taking membership. But when it came to voting, they said, well, uh, amongst other this, this parties, the closest to what we, we, we want is the EFF. And then they went to vote for the EFF. That's why if you look at the number of the EFF which shocked us, and it is now being explained by this. In 2019, we were just sitting and then we get 350,000 votes. We were like, uh uh. In Guazul Natal, eh? Which one's from where now? What happened? What did we do? We were shocked by, by receiving numbers. We, we even told you this. We repeated it in public platform. We don't know where those numbers came from. Now if there is an explanation. Those people were never ours. They were President Zuma's people. So it's good they found their home. They, they must relax in their home. There is absolutely no problem. We are fine. We want to know. We feel it like this. This is us. Hey, re, 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 we are complete now. SG, there is no, there is no borrowed vote. Yeah. Hey, hey, so uh, that's what explains uh, CD. There is nothing that you can say the EFF didn't do, uh, and and all of that. Hey, maybe that's why they did not get people. We got our people, and people who had borrowed us our vote, their vote, found a new political home. And then they went there. Remember, they didn't want Ramaphosa. Uh, in the ANC, they lost. Then, they, when they went to the polls in the country, they didn't vote for him. They voted for the EFF. And then they, when they went to arrest the old man, then it was a mess. A, a discussion which I had with President Ramaphosa. But you can't do what you're doing. You're going to make him a hero. 
Because it's not explainable what you want to arrest him for. So, and, 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 and July unrest should have told us that the man has got some support somewhere. Uh, and, and start treating him with care. But even after taking him out of jail, they still go on to harass him and all. None of them has, have gone to him to apologize. So, but we are happy, we are the happiest because we have achieved our mission in our lifetime. And that mission was to bring the ANC below 50%. That's what we have always told you, that this animal is going to be eaten piece by piece. So, Reina, we were holding on this other piece, preparing to go to the other piece of the animal. Hey, hey. Zuma arrived and took that piece. <laughs> we're eating piece by piece, and then Zuma went to take the piece we're going to. But we don't complain. We want to humble the ANC. The ANC is very humble. All of you, you can go on social media. All of them have disappeared. They have nothing to say. Slay Queen is on her. Slay Queen. No more money for slay queens. It's done. We've taken the purse. The purse is gone. You can go and look at the ANC in Swan. Go and look at the ANC in Ikurule. Go and look at the ANC in Jobek. They are dysfunctional. They have no direction because they lost power during local government. That disarray, you are going to see it at a provincial level. Thanks to the EFF. We started this job and we are continuing with it. Someone was asking me uh, if I'm going to resign because we performed bad. I won't do that. It's not a penny. I, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. That must be very clear. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere in terms of politics. I'm not going anywhere in terms of health. I'm not going anywhere in terms of age. Ours is a generational mission. It's not a popcorn that will just pop and disappear. It's going to stay. We have a staying power. And uh, we, in Parliament, we're going to lose if we lose seats. Th two, three seats. And we used to rasmatize that parliament 